Thank you, Alex, and all the team of the museum. Well, he was talking about uh, the first contact to start that collaboration, but I would like to show you what was the first document, so enigmatic for me. They said, here or there. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I love that paper. I kept that paper with a lot of love because I think it's a fantastic beginning. And, uh, and then, slowly and slowly, I knew the space better. And, uh, and, and as he told you, uh, I came over with a little model, which is Chloe. Uh, I've been doing drawings of Chloe on the right spot that I guess it was the best place. And today, when I seen the piece completely installed, uh, it was very moving for me because it looks exactly like my dream at that moment. And uh, I did several points of view. All these people walking is some of my assistants that I'm using for my Photoshop images <laughs> that I could recognize. And, and, and I like it to understand the different points of view of the piece in my drawings, okay? And, uh, and I guess it was important because the piece was in a crazy, fantastic relationship with the nature. It's a fantastic tree all, all around the piece and also in dialogue with this beautiful building and especially, I guess, because the weather of Virginia allowed people to sit outdoor in the terrace for many weeks in the year, many months. I guess it was a terrific conversation with the sculpture. And uh, that was the drawing. And, uh, and that was a little bit the beginning of the technical aspects of the piece that uh, the people from the Virginia Museum team was really concerned to be sure that the piece was uh, fabricated in the right conditions and everything. And uh, I, I, I'm not, that is the model that I brought over here. You can notice that it's looking to the opposite side. I did that correction in the piece. Uh, because I guess it was much better in the other direction. Uh, and, uh, okay, that it's Chloe in the model and that it's the beginning of my work. Modulating from the computer systems, as you know, I'm scanning the heads of the models that I'm using for my work to try to be as precise as possible with every single detail of the head, of the face, of the ears, of the nose, the eyes. And that is the beginning of the work. You can see the different elements. You see the, how beautiful is the single ear of the piece. And then, when we had all this material, we start to assemble it, the model all together, which is one very mysterious moment because we have not so much space in terms of height and we are working in horizontal many times because it's also easy to take the mold. Okay, you will see that is the first part of the mold. Okay, and, uh, and, and, and it's uh, amazing because the piece is so delicate, but we, when we do a mold in, with plaster, it seems a, a chaos. It seems that it, it's impossible, look at that, that something pristine and clean and fantastic could be inside. Uh, uh, I like it to show you those images because when we open the mold, you can see the piece, or you can, uh, intuitively in, understand the volume of the piece and it's, a, it's one of the most beautiful moments in, in the process when you open the, the, mod, the, the mold and you can remove the model and you see the negative shape of the piece. I think it's a beautiful shot. Okay, all the metal structure during the, the, the unveiling of the sculpture, uh, some guys asked me, I guess they were engineers, asked me about the the techniques inside, I'm not really interested about it, but I think it's nice for you to know. Uh, because for sure a piece is always standing up and, 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 and it's so resistant, because I'm much more interested about the soul of the piece than about techniques. Uh, my, my pieces are really responding very well about uh, techniques, uh, harness, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really interested about it. but. That is the piece already when it's complete with the fiberglass, the marble dust, the color, etc. And we are finishing the piece. Uh, it's a very nice moment because it's where we have to take a lot of attention with the tails. Because many times the tails are the key. The piece could be fantastic or 
okay, just okay. And I hate that word, okay. I think it's very, okay, the piece is wonderful. Okay, look at how beautiful is the piece in horizontal. And then the piece is finished. Okay, that is in my studio. And we fix the piece on this metal beams just to await the, the visit of the people from the museum. And it was a terrific moment because you are always nervous to know if they could like or not, etc. well, these kind of things. But Chloe was already something special. You see, it, it's this kind of uh, quietness, this kind of serenity that I, I aim to explore from my Mediterranean tradition to Virginia. Uh, I, I choose that girl, as you can notice, because it has a very strange classical Mediterranean beauty, a kind of strange, uh, which is out of time. It seems that she exists since ever. And, and, and I related with the Crown Fountain because the origin of my portraits are coming from the, that project in Chicago uh, in 2004, I finished in 2004, which I was trying to reintroduce the concept of head and portrait uh, in, in, in the public space. We, we lose completely that idea. Uh, uh, architecture, 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 geometry, geometry, geometry. And we lose slowly and slowly the presence of humanity, uh, something that could be a little bit like the mirroring where we can be reflect our uh, feelings, our intentions. And I did this piece which was a, a certain conversation spilling water from their mouths. <laughs> this, this idea, it was very important for me because when I was a child, I remember one of the best things, it was when my mother took me to, to walk in the Gothic uh, neighborhood in Barcelona with buildings from the Middle Age, and it's all the gargoyles with the strange faces, a little bit grotesque, spilling water from their mouths, and I said, wow, that is so beautiful. <laughs> and, and, and many times when we are talking, finally we are doing the same, we are spilling energy life from our mouth with, with our words, we are giving life to the others, and we create this kind of conversation, which is finally the base of our life, is, and, 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 and the Crown Fountain was aiming to catch that moment, uh, creating the, those faces. I've been filming 1,000 faces of people living in town, and uh, all kinds of people in that case. And uh, thanks to that project, I fall completely fascinated with the concept of portrait. Because finally, you are not exactly reproducing one person. You are probably reproducing an icon that could represent all of us. And, and in Chicago, I felt that experience really interesting because uh, the, the, those kind of faces were living inside the tower that were a little bit uh, a, a reproduction of the architecture all around. And, and, and it was towers with the live people in, moving, clicking the eyes, and suddenly they close the eyes and they start to spit water from their mouth like this girl. And uh, I think it was fantastic, and I still remember I spent almost four years working in that project. And, 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 and everybody was a little bit concerned, was not completely sure that the piece was right. And uh, they, they were afraid that this piece was maybe producing accidents in Michigan Avenue because the people lose the concentration, <laughs> or, or that the piece was more entertainment than art. And, and, and also it was something pretty interesting that uh, I can understand for the municipality, they were completely scary that it was water, real water passing through electric equipment. And, and for the city that was really something that makes them very scary. Okay. <laughs> Finally we got it, we did it. And, uh, and it's a piece that never had an accident because I, I'm always taking a lot of care about that because the main thing in one of those sculptures is the people enjoying the interaction with the people. And, and the pool, the reflecting pool, finally was just a, 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 like a stage in where people just had the possibility to walk in the water and then they change completely, they start to smile, they start conversations with the people besides. It was, I guess, the concept of Mediterranean plaza exported to the north in some ways. Because 
people tell me, but what's happening between the towers? I said, nothing. They are just waiting the people arrive. And, 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 and I guess kids understood me much better than adults in that moment because they immediately understood that it was a place for freedom. And, uh, and I remember with my team, uh, I asked the day before the opening to, to remove the fence that was protecting the, the piece. And it was late in the afternoon, and we never know from where kids and kids came over and, and in, start to enjoy the piece. Okay, uh, uh, obviously the relationship <laughs> of people and water is very important. As you know, the mostly part of our body are composed by water. And, and water for me is a key element in life. And, 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 and to see all those people enjoying, I guess it's just fantastic. <laughs> Uh, that is a terrific picture that because it's a, well, I guess it explained very well what was my intention to walk on the water. Uh, probably you know, but I don't float, I don't swim. Even if I'm from the Mediterranean area, it was a shame for my mother. Uh, and, and probably I was dreaming that one day I could walk on the water. And that was one of my dreams accomplished. And, uh, and, and the water is on top of the pool and is only one-eighth of an inch thick. That means that everybody could walk, even with shoes. Wow, water again. Uh, that was the Venice Biennial two years ago. As you know, the, the Venice Biennial starts in two weeks. And, uh, and it's a beautiful memory for me that last Biennial. I've been installing a beautiful inst a show with that basilica which is San Giorgio Maggiore, which is a, a beautiful basilica from the 16th century. Uh, and, and, and I wanted to introduce the hat again. And, and, and it's a mix of my mesh heads, which, in, well, probably emphasize the transparency, the capacity of the human beings to let pass the light through and, and, and to illuminate the rest of people around. And, and, and it was terrific because through my piece, you see the others, but also you see how beautiful is the architecture around. And, and below the cupola, I hang a blessing hand, which, as you know, that is a, a Catholic church, and, and they are celebrating the Mass every, every Sunday. And, and I, I like it to do a specific piece for them, which is the hand, but made out with different alphabets. Because I guess the importance is not which is your religion, but the importance is to met all together and to share our spirituality. It doesn't matter where you come from or what is your origin, religion, culture, it doesn't matter. And that piece or that project was called Together because the church becomes at that moment a gathering place where everybody was welcome. And, and, and the pleasure, it's because the paintings that you see in both sides are from Tintoretto. That means it was a good colleague in that show. It, and, and, and I will enjoy. And, and in the back side of the church, it was a beautiful, strange, long, 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 long corridor. And I installed this line of uh, portraits uh, carved in alabaster. Alabaster, you know, is a kind of translucent stone, very soft, but the light passed through. And I guess it was a terrific experience. Look at the air that the, the light passed through the, the stone. And it was so spiritual. Believe me, it was one, one beautiful installation with all the faces, just one after another. Okay, water again. Uh, that was a project that I did a uh, few years ago in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, it, was a, it was a show. It was a six-month installation. And they asked me, uh, well, even with the helicopter, they, they showed me the city. Where do you like to show it? I, 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 and I said, on the water. And, uh, and it's pretty complex. The, the, the government and municipality obviously is trying to protect the beaches and, and the water nearby. And, and I spent a little time to convince them that I'm very respectful, etc., because they were afraid to dig down on the, on the, on, on the sun, etc. And, and, and I had to, to invent a system, which I guess it was a miracle that the piece is standing up without any hole, nothing. It's just like this. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and I still remember the day that we were installing. Well, actually, it was during the night. 
we were waiting, the, 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 the tie is changing pretty much every six hours, and we, we were never ready to, 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 to with all this, the, the tools and equipment, and the tie was up and down, come on, and the crane was hanging the head in the right place over there, but the tie was up and the water was covering the wheels of the crane, and the crane was moving in that way. And, and I was with the driver inside, facing, and two teams were holding with ropes, etc. And he said, Jaume, I could not hold the head anymore. I should leave it. I said, but it's not in the way. Boom, I, boom. He left the head, and the head gets to the perfect spot in the right position, vertical, standing up. I never understood the techniques of that piece, but it was working. <laughs> and look at how beautiful is the piece in the spot, because look at he, over there, you see, it's the Corcovado, it's this beautiful image uh, on top of the mountain, and, and the, the piece is facing there, and in the back is the Sugarloaf, which is also a terrific place. Uh, many times, uh, the importance of one sculpture is not the sculpture in itself, it's how or in which way could transform the things around. And uh, I guess it was a beautiful experience because uh, when, when the piece uh, was already installed and people was happy with, it was, I don't know, an institution in Rio did the publicity with the photo of my piece. And it says, we already knew that Rio was beautiful. Now we know it's unforgettable. And that I think is beautiful because many times art has the tremendous capacity to transform the way that we are looking something that we believe we know. And, and, and we change our eyes to look at it a different way. And, 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 and even that piece that was installed really in, 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 in the Poscar of Rio in some ways, even you can change the Poscar. I think I think it's, it was a terrific experience. Okay, and that experience, when six months after, the, the curator of that, uh, uh, that show told me, Jaume, the show has been so successful, we can destroy the piece. I said, but come on. And, and thanks God, my gallery in New York uh, sent me her help, they help, and, and we kept the piece in one storage in Rio. And, uh, and then, uh, the piece was traveling to Chicago because they celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Crown Fountain. And I installed the piece over there. Okay, how much it changed the piece in one or another spot? I think it was also a terrific experience. The, the lake is just in the backside, it's behind the head. And, and, and the, 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 the head now is facing the street which is split Chicago in north and south. And, and, and for me, always, I know pretty well Chicago now. I always dream it was like the equator of the city. And, and, and look at the pieces facing this equator, which I guess is fantastic. Okay, uh, the piece uh, was there for almost two years. And then the, the, the Paris Museum in Miami fell in love with the piece. They bought the piece. And, and we installed the piece last December in front of the museum in Miami, and this changed completely again, the same piece in the different spot. Uh, I, I like it to make this evolution of one piece because in that case in Richmond, I, I did a specific side project, let's say. But sometimes it could happen something like, like a homeless piece that is moving from one city to another. And I guess finally, a Wilda, which is the name of that, that girl was a girl, is a girl from the Dominican Republic, uh, find its own place in Miami. And it's also facing the water, okay? I, I convinced the museum that I was much more interested to install the piece facing the water than to be uh, inside or nearby the, the building. And, and from the bridge, you see at the right side is the museum and the piece is facing the entrance of the Miami Harbor which I think is a kind of certain welcoming to people arriving there. Okay, more water. Uh, that is a, a little island in the south of Japan called Ogijima, which is a, a pretty beautiful tiny island, you see, with all the houses. And they asked me to do, I don't know, something that they call a place to welcome visitors. 
because uh, the island is a very famous island in Japan because for several months they're completely covered with daffodils, flowers and flowers all over. And, and, and I did this kind of hybrid sculpt architecture pavilion, I don't know, that uh, I install also on top of a, a, a reflecting pool. It's a little island in the island in where people could walk and enjoy to, to buy the tickets for the ferry, you see. It's a beautiful uh, 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 interior inside uh, sea called it Seto with a lot of little islands. And that one now is an, an extra island, which is my piece, uh, floating over here. And the, the, the ferries stop nearby. And, and I, I dream it to try to reproduce my ideal home in that place, which is the selfish, like a muzzle with two sides that close and you keep protected inside. And, and, and in that case, the thing that I did is like a roof, and in, in the rest of the other side is reflected on the water. I, I guess that is a beautiful picture that you can understand very well. That's me walking inside the, the building with my dream about the home, the, 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 the two sides of itself is that, like a muzzle, an oyster. You know, one is real, physically real, and the other is just a reflection. Uh, I guess sculpture is strongly related with the idea of reflect. I love when we decided the spot for Chloe over here, because when you are going to the entrance of the museum, you probably notice that the piece is reflected in the, in the little pond that you have in the entrance, it's beautiful. The reflection on the water. Well, I know it's not the same proportion of water, but it's water. That for me is very important. <laughs> Okay, all the shadows that normally my work are creating when I'm working with alphabets, with uh, characters of different languages mixing up with them, are, are creating these beautiful transparencies. And, and all those things are coming from this kind of work that I decided to do. Uh, I explained several times that uh, uh, I, I was born in a family that my father was completely in love with books. He was always reading playing piano and reading. That his, was his wall at home. And probably very young, I had the possibility to enjoy text. Doesn't matter the content, but visually text. That means pages and pages. And I was always a little bit concerned about the frontality of the text. You, I, I was curious to know what is the backside of one letter, because you only see the front. How it looks an A, B, C, but on the backside. And I remember in the 80s, I did a book on with glass, which was completely transparent. And you had the capacity to see the text from the other side. But it was not enough, because it was still fixed in a kind of frontal uh, 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 wall. And I decided to do curtains with my preferred poets, just curtains of poetry, and, uh, which is, reminds a little bit the curtains that at least in my tradition in the Mediterranean area was in front of the stores to avoid flies to go in. And it was made with little pieces of metal that when I was a child was playing with, with my mother was by, making a beautiful sound. And that's, the, those pieces are a little bit in that way because install it in many different ways. You always have the capacity to read you see, that was at the National Sculpture Center in Dallas. I did a long, long wall of that. Or, or that kid which is enjoying touching the curtains. Or this girl which takes a decision to pass through. I guess it's a very similar decision that people when they're walking on the water in Chicago. And many times, this little, just something, a movement, makes a, a, a very important decision. And, 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 and poetry, are protectors from the flies of life. And, and, and when you are surrounded by poetry, I guess, life is a little bit more interesting. OK, uh, continuing in, this, in the, the, the line of uh, letters, and in that case was a project that I did with Norman Foster in the Italian Alps. Uh, we were invited to do a project with the snow, and I immediately liked it to do like uh, an stam. I was saying, a little keys on the landscape. That means to try to be very precise, I've been using the GPS position of the Norman's studio in London, my studio in Barcelona, 
and the place in, in Italy, it was in Sestiere, in the Italian house, it was beautiful. And, and it was a terrific experience because, well, finishing the piece, those guys were working to, to make the numbers that I designed in circle. But, well, at, at the same time, it was illuminated in the night, it was beautiful. But at the same time that we were doing the piece, the piece was melting also. And it was, I, I still remember Norma was really uh, concerned about that because sometimes journalists are not coming when it's the right moment. Uh, they, are, they are coming when they can to come. And, and maybe many journalists arrived when the piece was completely disappeared. And, and, but I felt it was so poetical, so beautiful, because many times we have to trust about our memories without any document in front. And that piece just gone, just disappeared. And I think it was a fantastic experience. Okay, talking about the circle and the water again, because the snow is, is another way to think about water. Uh, that was a piece that I did in Dubai. Uh, they uh, asked me to do the entrance for the, uh, the, in the lobby of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. You know, it's the tallest building in the world. It's huge, it's beautiful. It's about uh, one kilometer tall. And, uh, and the lobby is also very big. And I like it to create uh, like little ponds from where they were emerging, all those kind of roads with symbols. I've been working a lot with symbols some years ago because I, I like it, the vibration of materials. I told you that my father was playing piano at home, but I was hitting myself inside that piano. It was an upright piano, and the harp is a triangle shape, and it was the perfect room for my body at that age. And, and when it was some problems at home, I was hitting myself inside. And my father was playing piano without the knowledge that he was in. And I, I believe me, it was a terrific, I recommend you if you have the capacity. <laughs> it's a, you really feel the, the vibration of the materials. The, mean, the, 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 the piano is composed by wood, felt, and dust. And this is strange smell of time, the lies, lies and lies of, uh, time, uh, the, and, and uh, it's unforgettable, actually. And, and I remember when he was playing, the vibration of the instrument was the vibration of my body. We vibrate all as one. And I guess that is an incredible experience that talks a lot about sculpture. Sculpture finally is something like that. And I decided in Dubai represent every country with one of those symbols, and it's 196 symbols as much as countries in the world which uh, I, I fabricate the symbols with a fantastic craft guy in Italy, and, and everyone is made by hand. That means that everyone has a different sound. And, 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 and it's some droplets of water falling down from the ceiling, and, and it's percutting, the, beating the, the symbols and making a beautiful sound. When, 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 when you go inside the lobby, you see the door, you pass in between the two little ponds, I recommend you Mission Impossible 4, and Tom Cruise is passing in between. <laughs> and, and uh, well, it's the best part of the movie, but <laughs> I recommend it. You see, when you are in the center of the piece looking up, and you see all the symbols, it's a kind of dream. And you can see in the, in the ceiling some little black dots are the, the holes in where the droplets are falling down, beating the symbols. Okay. That is the piece a little bit. Uh, that was uh, precedent experiences, again, with symbols. I've been using poetry from William Blake. William Blake was a terrific poet, but also a fantastic artist, as you know. He did fantastic drawings. But he has a, a, an, an amazing poem, which is The Proverbs of Hell. And, uh, and, and in, in one of the moments, he said, one thought feels immensity. And I guess it was a key, uh, a key quote, because uh, I had that feeling, but I never had the capacity to express so well uh, that idea as uh, uh, William Blake did. And uh, one thought feels immensity, what it means. It means that we, or the objects around us, are spraying a kind of certain energy, filling up the space with energy, not necessarily with physical elements, but with energy. Finally, our words are filling up the space, they are invisible, but they are 
in some ways creating an amazing cloud of energy around us. And, and the symbols were engraved with poetry from him and, and each one had a, a, drop, a droplet of water percutting the symbol and creating, you see, you can see over here the, the text and the droplet falling down and, and creating a fantastic sense of sound. And I was also working with uh, gongs. I always remember when I was in a concert, when I was a child with my family, my, my, my hero was the percussionist because he did nothing. <laughs> he was there in one corner sitting. Suddenly in one moment he just went up it, boom and back. I, th I guess it was a terrific image of a sculpture. Sculptures, we are very similar because it seems that we don't do nothing because our work is so heavy, so complicated to move, to transport, to carry, and you are waiting and waiting. But you must to use the right moment. And then it's when the sculpture is done. And today we enjoy all together that moment for me. But in the in, in, in these pieces, the mullets were hanging just beside, and, and people was able to take the mullet and beat the gong, and it, they start to smile. It, you, you get the feeling that they were waiting for, for years that moment. <laughs> and, uh, and it was fantastic as that woman, for example, that she was feeling the vibration. When you are beating a gong, it, the, the, the material is vibrating in a so amazing way that passes that vibration to your body. I, probably it's the piano of my father in another way. And, uh, and I, it was also writing poetry. In that case, it was from Song of Songs, which I guess is one of the most beautiful and sensual poems that nobody did before. Okay, the circle again. That it's an, a, another way to look at my concept of home, or the concept of self-portrait, you've seen the piece in Ogijima, but that is a, a very important piece for me as well, because it, 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 it's a, wait a second, okay, this is me, okay, and, and the same figure is coming up and closing uh, in an interior space in a, in a kind of glob. I think the glob in geometry is probably one of the most perfect shapes and, 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 and I'm surrounded by the globality of the world with different alphabets, different languages, but I'm protected with my ideas, with myself. And I, and I think it's a, a very important piece because I, I believe that many times people should be alone with themselves. I guess we, we, that our time is too noisy. We have so much information. And sometimes we need to understand what we have inside and to be a little bit close with ourselves. Well, and that is that it's my concept about self-portrait. Look at from inside, that is a piece that I did uh, some years ago for my show in New York. And it was another concept. It's the, this idea that we are floating in a kind of uh, uh, space, in a universe. And, 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 and it's as important the physical element as the shadow that we are projecting on the ground. I mean, this idea that it's not only important the real element, but the reflection in the mirror. Every morning when we are in front of the mirror, we said, wow, we are great. But it just, <laughs> you are talking with one image, but this image is as important as you. You probably remember in Peter Pan that he is crazy to try to catch his shadow because it's living, and he fixed in the feet again, and, and, and the shadow uh, it's so key because many times it's in the many uh, poetical writings that if you lose your shadow, you are gone. Okay, that piece is talking about our shadow and look at how beautiful it is. And it was a show in Le Long in New York and, uh, and I remember in the opening a guy came to, to, to say me hello and said, look at Jaume, if tomorrow you are coming back to the gallery and you miss one of the shadows, it's me who is tall. I think... <laughs> It was beautiful because really for me the most important, that was at the museum in, in Nashville, it was very important, the idea of shadow, which it takes a, a kind of physicity. Okay, the idea of conversation that you probably understood at the piece in Chicago that is facing each other, it's something that I'm working a lot. And, 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 and this kind of pieces facing each other, in that case is a German 
a name, Spiegel, but it means mirror. It's this idea, as I told you before, you in front of the, the mirror every morning, you and the other. Um, I mean, when you are in a conversation, finally, uh, the other is like you, and you are part of the other. And I think it's beautiful. Uh, and, and, and my pieces are trying always to create a space around in where, look at this young girl is enjoying herself, concentrate. I could get also other kinds of supporters, <laughs> like this guy in, in, that I found in Yorkshire. And, uh, and, but but uh, water again, okay. And uh, that was a, a, a great project that I did for the Picasso Museum in Antilles. And, uh, and, and I asked the possibility to install a piece right watching the Mediterranean Sea. And I think it's a very important piece because I call Nomad. My life is always traveling. I love to be always in movement. And, uh, and, 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 and it's in a certain way a certain kind of portrait. And, and that is another very important piece for me because uh, I, I, I've been elongating already the letters as I'm doing with the heads to create this sense of roots, that the text is coming out from the, from, from, from the ground, is rising from the ground. Uh, because I guess we are part of one territory. We are part of one country. We, we, we are part of a land. We are like a tree. We have roots that comes down in the earth. And, 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 and that piece, it's, uh, well, it's the beginning of a new family of words, which I'm working a lot with el this elongation of the text, which I guess is beautiful. That was a very important piece for me, which is also is a commission that I got from the MIT to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the university. And I like it because I use another kind of alphabet, which is the, the mathematics, the formulas. Because uh, like a musician, a mathematician could read and understand a formula. And, 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 and it's in, right in the entrance of the MIT and many people are taking pictures when they are visiting their kids, etc. Beautiful piece. Okay, music. Mathematics, music, harmony, that means the, the text. And that was a beautiful installation that I did at Place Vendôme in Paris some years ago. And, and the central piece is made out, not with letters, but with music notes and straps. And, and, and well, it's an, another kind of, uh, of uh, Alphabet, okay, another of those pieces in dialogue or that one that it was in, in Miami. And, uh, and, and, and that is an, another kind of word that I like to show you. This kind of big angels, I said, like big angels that get to stick it here or there. They don't know how to fly. They are just uh, plenty of imperfections, which is the portrait of humanity in some ways, because we are not really perfect. But even with our imperfection, we have the capacity to illuminate life. This idea that we are spreading this life all around. And I did in many directions, in the walls or in the top of poles like that, that was in Georgia or in Bordeaux. And, and the light, that is the National Sculpture Center that has one in each side, and, and, or in Nice. And, and they have this capacity, they are changing lights and they, they create, let's say, a conversation, but in a silent conversation, better to say, not with words, but with colors, which I guess it represents pretty well our feelings and emotions. That is a, a beautiful piece. And, 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 and also this kind of groups of elements, that, that is a piece which is my self-portrait seven times with my body covered with the names of music composers. And, 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 and that is uh, my homage to the alchemist. You probably noticed that the piece in the MIT, the title was Alchemy. I've been always very interested in that period of time because people were, I don't know, dreamers, let's say. And they were really trying to understand what's happened with materials, but the main materials, which is the spirit and the soul. I mean, uh, and, and they said, well, from the death body, from the mineral, from the, from the death material, a new life is coming up. And they represent that in the shape of a tree. The roots in the mineral, the trunk as a bridge, and the branches embracing the cosmos. And I guess it was incredible. Many people only remember the alchemists because they, 
wanted to, to transform lead into gold. But that is a beautiful metaphor about life. And, uh, and I wanted to represent that. OK, it's my portrait uh, uh, cast in bronze uh, that gets completely fixed in one site, in one volume, in one weight. But our soul, what's, where is our soul going? Because we continue to get experiences, experiences, and the soul is growing and growing. And my body is not enough for. Where is the soul going? And, and I love it to represent the soul with a life tree which continues to grow up. And, 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 and it's a very beautiful and very spiritual piece that was, the other one was in Yorkshire's counterpart, that one in Shanghai, or that one in Nashville. And kids love that piece because they could touch my head like this. And, uh, and, and they have this strong relationship with nature. And because in some ways it's also a way to embrace a tree. I guess it's a beautiful also metaphor that we have to protect the nature and our environment. That was the last installation in the, uh, the Museum in Toledo. And, and, I, and I installed the piece in its slope and it was very beautiful. Okay, another pieces. That it's uh, the same idea of portraits, but using the mesh. I, I told you that I'm scanning the, the, the heads of my models. But scanning means that you can catch completely the 3D volume of the person or the object, whatever you do. But, uh, and and, and the, that information is coming into the computer in the shape of a 3D mesh. Okay, that 3D mesh has an amazing harmony. And, 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 and I like it to design my own mesh and, and we design our own mesh, and the, the deal was to try to pass that virtual information into reality. We spent really a lot of time until the moment I got the right technique to do it. And, and now I could control pretty well. And that was an installation that I did two years ago, but on top of a pond. And, and it was a little bit similar, like in Rio, it was a miracle. Because they are, it seems that they are floating on top of this beautiful pond. And the reflection is terrific. And, uh, and, and it was great because, well, that is another piece in Chicago with the transparency, or in a museum, in the Meadows Museum in Dallas. You can see through always. And that is probably one of the most interesting. It's a picture that I took with my work at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park in England, in the north of England. And, and you can understand the importance of that, that those pieces in my world, because everything around gets inside the head and is part of your dreams and your ideas. I guess that is a nice metaphor of our life, because finally we are not only ourselves, but also uh, what are surrounding us. And, and I guess those pieces are beautiful, because as the piece that I did in Venice, you can see always through. The, the piece is never blind, the things that they have behind. Instead than that, is in, including everything inside. That is a, is a great, a great, a great photo. And that is a piece that I did in a public space in Calgary. Norman Foster again did the building behind. And he did a beautiful design because the building is in curve. And, and that opens a new empty space, a new plaza in downtown Calgary. And, and, and the city want, wants me to do a piece there. And I thought it was very important to dream about the possibility to walk inside the head. And, and I opened two entrances. And, and I still remember that Foster and his team were saying, but Jaume, be careful with the scale. I mentioned in the, in the, in the remarks uh, when we unveiled the piece how important are the scale in, in the sculpture. And they said, but look at the beams, look at the, the, the size of the building. I said, don't worry, uh, I'm not trying to be in a scale or in relationship with the building. I'm trying to be in relationship with the people in the street. The main concern is people. And look at, it's very interesting because the building becomes like a screen behind. And the, the main relationship of the piece is with the people around. And, and it's in a perfect scale again. Because the piece becomes like a poetical shelter in where people could walk in and feel protected in some ways, like in the piece in Ogijima. And it's beautiful because when you are inside, you can see the skyline of the city through the face. 
is my little homage to Magritte. I love this idea to the surreal painter that it was dreaming about the sky and the faces. And, and I guess it's terrific in, intervention in the public space. And, uh, and, and then also I would like to, to show you other pieces in the same path of Chloe in Richmond because uh, those are cast in iron. I spent several years casting a lot in iron, you see. That was in, in, in Nashville, this one is in Bordeaux, near the Opera House. That one is in Chatsburg. Uh, it was a very beautiful exhibition that we did with Sotheby's. Or that one that was at the Benis Biennium four years ago in front of the Grand Canal. It was a, a beautiful, a beautiful installation. That one was in Amsterdam, for example. Or that is right now at the Harbour Business School. And, 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 and I love that because she is a very tiny little girl nearby my studio in Barcelona. And, and, and I love because her name is Ines and, and she's right in the center of the business school, completely out of, she, she, she's not interested to be there, you know? <laughs> she's completely dreaming about herself and I love that, I think it's perfect. That is a piece is still on display in London, besides the Gherkin uh, from Foster. It, it, it's a beautiful piece there. And that is a permanent piece in the Museo Mintolido in Ohio. That was one of the marble sculptures. That is in marble. Uh, and, and, and that I did for the Albert Knox Museum in Buffalo. And, uh, and it was already this approach. But that is probably one of the, the key points, also like the Crown Fountain for me. That was a project that I did in the north of Liverpool, in the, at this place called Sutton Manor, which was one of the most important mines uh, colliery in England, in the north of England, that when Margaret Thatcher canceled all the carbon system there, all the, all the little town gets completely in a very big depression, employment, etc. well, you know. And, uh, and 20 uh, years later, they decided to transform the colliery into a public park. And they asked me to, to, to help them or to do a project there. It was a terrific experience because I remember that we, 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 we transformed the pub in the city as our office, and we did many meetings with the ex-miners, and I remember that one ex-miner told me one day, Jalma, you can't believe it, how, how dark is when you are 300 meters under the pit. The, the darkness is so deep that light becomes a dream, he told me. I was very impressed and I entitled the piece Dream because obviously coming from the Mediterranean area, light for me is so normal. The, 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 the sky is normally blue, the, 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 the sea is blue, the light is gorgeous. But in the north of England, you feel the darkness below the, 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 the lawn, below the, the green. And, and I understood better how much uh, strong must be to be inside the, the, the mine in that concept. And, uh, and I like it to imagine that head rising from the earth, completely concentrate, talking about the interior, like the mine, and she was dreaming. And in that case, I guess for them it was important not only to be close to the piece, but also to make a project that could be seen from really far away. Okay, and nearby it, it's the M62, which is the, 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 the road, the highway connecting Manchester and Liverpool. And I like it to make something that is really visible from far away. Look at it, it seems a fairy tale that it's like a, a presence there. It's about 20 meters tall, the piece. And it's rising from behind the trees. And when, when the cars are passing, it's visible. But look at the trees, and people has the same effect, and the piece is rising in between. I'm there, you see in the, the left side. That was the opening day. It was also a terrific day. But in that piece, I was still working with segments. It was in the complete volume. 
And, uh, and, and I'd like to show you that piece because for, for several years I've been working in that direction, like the project that I did at Madison Square Park in New York some years ago, that uh, it was the presence of the piece in the greener of that beautiful park. And uh, I chose this Chinese girl that, uh, uh, well, it, it's living nearby my studio also. And, uh, which, which represents pretty well the, the, this kind of mix of people living up and down. All, and, and I like it in, in this peaceful moment of the Sunday, you see which all the people, it's a little bit like in the Crown Fountain, the iron building behind. And, uh, and, and in that piece is a certain homage to Brancusi. I, I, I work on the hair, you see, and, and, and you see like it seems the endless column behind. And, uh, and in the night is gorgeous. I, I don't know if you are planning to illuminate the piece in the evening here, but uh, I love the magic uh, effect in the evening because it, it's part of a dream. I, I love it. Well, I love to sleep. I love to dream. I guess it's one very important part of our life is when we are out of ourselves and we are really enjoying other parts of our body. And the piece after New York, uh, the piece has been sold to a collector who offered to the Seattle Museum. And now the piece is installed, obviously, in front of the water. <laughs> I asked the possibility to really be in the edge. Uh, because in the other side of the bay is the Olympus uh, Mount. And, 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 and she's facing the Olympus Mount in a very good company with Mar de Zubero and Calder, which uh, it, uh, I love them. And, and I think the piece is great because I told you before that I love architecture, but architecture is ge geometric always. And also, uh, the Zubero or Calder, which I love, are geometric. Or the tower that it was, well, in a certain fashion kind of architecture at that time. But people, it's, uh, if you uh, cover my head here, uh, I mean, it seems that the, the presence of human body is needed. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm really happy that now the landscape of that space is complete. Okay, that is my last show in Paris last year uh, at Le Long Gallery. And I was working in that way. I've been carving those heads in wood, and then I pass into bronze uh, to lose the concept of materials. And, and I painted on white even to lose the concept of bronze. That means I lose the wood, I lose the bronze. And, and then I start to make my drawings directly on the wall, and which uh, it was the way to integrate architecture in the same uh, installation. And, and, and it was like a fairy tale when you come from the streets of Paris that are always noisy. Uh, suddenly you came into the, into the space and it was very peaceful. That was a show that I finished uh, last December in, in, the, uh, in Germany near Cologne at the, Max Museum, and look at the, I've been also making drawings on the, on the walls and also uh, showing these new pieces, which are the portraits carved on wood and burned with my torch. And, uh, and, 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 and working on this kind of beams that are coming from demolished buildings. I guess in the, in, in the building, probably one of the most important parts are the beams. Even if sometimes are invisible, they are, and we need them. It's like our bonds, and I love this concept uh, uh, with the beams, you see, that uh, look, look at how beautiful all the heads are. And, uh, and, and uh, continuing with the portraits, I, I, I'm also working a lot now with this uh, small kind of portraits, floating and unfinished portraits that I call invisible. Uh, uh, it's uh, the same mesh as the big ones, but I don't finish. And, 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 and uh, all, the, all the little roads moving creates an amazing kind of universe that I love very much. And, uh, and even the transparency on, all between of them, look at how beautiful. Because you don't know anymore if you are in front or in the back. And, uh, and that was my last, my last show in New York at Le Long Gallery which I've been working also this kind of labyrinth with beams and, and heads and drawings 
I, I guess it was a terrific, uh, terrific installation. I'm really proud about that show. And uh, look at how beautiful the relationship is. The same, the same girl uh, on the wall and in the boot. I'm, I'm working on the boot with graphite, which gets a certain kind of evanescent effect, uh, you know. And, and this afternoon I was incredibly happy in front of the piece because when the sun moved back to the tree, the piece was the more and more like one of my drawings on the wall. And the, the, the gray, very light gray colors was not almost shadows. I think it was a beautiful moment. Okay. And, uh, well, the backside again, you see how much I give it importance. And also working the several positioning, uh, well, is no evil, speak no evil, etc but also introducing the idea of silence. You see in the center is the one with that position. And uh, because I'm, 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 I think it's very important to fabricate, to produce, to, to introduce silence again in our lives. I guess it's too noisy. We, we, need, we need to create a certain quietness around us to, to try to think about ourselves. And, uh, and well, it's me obviously making a drawing. And that is the last show. It's a show that I just opened recently at the and, uh, at a museum in France called Saint Etienne Museum, and uh, and it's a mix of uh, it's an experience for me because I mix uh, very opaque materials like cast iron with a very translucent, which is my pieces with mesh, and and it's a group of five portraits plus two other portraits but in mesh, and I think it's working beautifully because. Well, it's a completely different experience when you walk through one to another. And, uh, and, and look at when you are looking in between. And, and uh, well, uh, I love when it's somebody passing through. Uh, uh, it's a great experience. And, uh, and I wanted to finish my talk. We are near, don't worry. It's uh, when some people from the museum came to visit the piece. And, uh, and we were dreaming and imagining how the piece will look finally installed in the garden. Today we really uh, understood that the piece, it is working and, oh, what's happened here? <laughs> well, okay, that's the end, obviously. <laughs> so, sorry. So, <laughs> No, I, I, I wanted to say that the last slide is outdoor, it's in the back. <laughs> okay, that, but it's, <laughs> thank you.